pressing away at this Manchester United goal. And here comes Sillard. Sillard to the outside right, Humphreys. And the goal! What excitement! Over at Highfield Road, Coventry, the anxiety is just as intense, but, but for a very different reason. There, they hope not to avoid relegation, but to gain promotion from the third division to the second. And present prospects, judging on recent form, uh, are very good indeed, I would say. True, they've five matches left to play, and one of them is a local derby, more or less, with Peterborough, always a hard game. But then, I think that the Highfield Road boys can do it. They had a hard match with Port Vale too, in fact, and they played a draw both times. They won't get harder opposition than Port Vale gave them, and they've got the stuff there now to come out and win promotion. Now that they've got their confidence back, and they've started clicking again. They're a little bit frilly on the wings, I think, but they're playing a lot of nice football. I think it's too good to keep them in third division. Jimmy, Ken's now talking to Shrewsbury's manager after rally, but he's coming back this evening to see you. Are, are you going to sign him on then, do you think? Yes, I think almost by the time this programme comes out, he will be a Coventry player. And I'm absolutely sure that uh, by the time he sits watching the match this evening, he will be sticking up for us, I hope. Now, Matt Gillis, the Leicester manager, said that his chances of getting back into the first team there were restricted because of his car crash. Does that worry you at all? No, it wasn't because of his car crash. I think. It happened, uh, he had this car crash, which meant that another player got into the side and temporarily was out of it. But there are no bad effects from his car crash. And in fact, he's seen a specialist this morning uh, who says that he's perfectly fit for two or three years, which is the kind of investment that we're thinking of. Now, what do you, do you hope he's going to do for Coventry? Well, at the moment, we're still beset by injuries. Uh, the side that's playing tonight is, in many respects, something like a reserve side. And uh, we have managed to strengthen the defence with uh, a signing. And I think this is going to help us to strengthen the forward line and score goals, because only Machin's injury is, is one that's a blow to us. And we are obviously short of goal-scoring power. And Ken's very happy about coming here. Oh, I think so. I think he's looking forward to joining us and, uh, and he'll live in get some goals. Oh, yes, yes. Suggested he's confident to deal with anything 
what toilet rolls. And there's the second goal. A bad mistake by the Huddersfield defence. A terrible mistake. And Gould has made it certain that I would say that Huddersfield now stay in the second division. Bob Gould, number nine. Bob Hatton hunt got a ball in the air against Curtis. Then very few players do. Because Reese. Goal, yes. What a great goal. Machin going to take the corner. Lynn Swinger, you'll notice. Until 1967, that is, Chairman Derek Robbins and manager Jimmy Hill masterminded the Sky Blue Revolution. The team were propelled through the divisions. A record crowd of more than 51,000 saw them beat Wolves. They'd already clinched their first division place. The boom city of the 60s finally had a team to match its ambitions. Shaken Coventry pretty rigid today by this decision. Now, uh, why are you leaving Coventry and what are you going to do? Well, why I'm leaving Coventry because I've decided to give up football management. All I was asking for was a 10 year contract. And uh, Derek Robbins, the chairman, um, not for any uh, unpleasant reasons, but had seen two 10 year contracts in football not work. I, I think my own personal feeling is that he had already, through Bagnall Harvey, was with whom he was very close and a partner in Broadway, had already arranged um, a contract with ITV. This man we looked up to and we respected so, so much. And uh, I, I could get very emotional about the situation because I know what he's achieved for Bobby Gould. And um, that goes back a long, long way. Shepard! Must be a goal if Tudor's got the speed, he should score. Yes, one goal. A great ball by Shepard. Penalty in the third penalty of the match. Tudor brought down by Irwin. And there are two Coventry players hurt. Tudor nearest to us. And Reeson farther away. And Tudor wasn't even hurt at all. That's Lewis, former Portsmouth player. Up against Montgomery, no booing this time. Is it the equaliser? Yes!
O'Rourke getting just a touch forward. Playing Want into trouble. Pratt in difficulties there. And a chance for Martin. No, Machen. Here it is. Ernie Machen, number four. Ernie Machen scores his first goal of the season. And That's not a bad ball to him either. Back for Hunt. Ooh, that was a, a tackle that started so late he could have started last Saturday. Number seven, Neil Johnson. One number seven on the other. This is the, the injured one, Ernie Hunt. And there's the other number seven having a quiet word from the referee, Neil Johnson. It's his first game of the season. And... Uh, Clements with the free kick. Martin a touch forward. Gilzine, and that's O'Rourke. Oh, what a great goal. John O'Rourke. And Alan Gilzine walking out of the picture. Angry. Good ball back for Coop. Martin in the middle, looking for the head. England there. Chance now. There it is. Gibson. Gibson. 3-1 to Coventry.